In episode six, when everybody returns to the Outer Banks, they're in a pretty bad mood. The trip to Wilmington just didn't go as planned. They came up empty-handed. Their only hope is that John B. and Big John have some good news. When they meet up, they don't. Big John instructs his son to lie to his friend, saying, We'll make it all right in the end. We just have to keep things close. We can't cut them in yet. So John B. reluctantly does this. He lies to his friends, but his friends can tell that something's not right. But for the time being, they just have to take John B. at his word that they went to Charleston and didn't find a thing. Sarah, though, does have to confront him. She's noticed a change since Big John has come back into the picture. The stress of lying to his friends, of everything that's going on, it caves in on John B. and he loses it on Sarah. He says some things he's going to regret about her relationship with her dad. And she's not going to just sit back and let John B. talk to her like that. So she says, hey, you know what? Come find me when you're ready to tell me the truth. And she leaves. She's not the only Cameron who is extremely frustrated, though. So is Ward. Ward's gotten word that the cross was stolen and he calls up Rafe. But Rafe plays dumb. And he does so in a way that basically admits, yeah, I'm the one who stole the cross without saying it. He doesn't seem all that concerned with the fact that the cross was stolen, saying, well, I mean, we were just going to give it away anyway. There's not a whole lot Ward can do from Guadalupe, and Rafe knows this. So he plays the ultimate trump card, saying, here's the deal. I'm in charge now, because everybody assumes that you're dead, and there's nothing you can do about it. So you're no longer calling the shots. Your time is over. Needless to say, Rafe is feeling pretty chesty after melding that gold down. Well, in a lot of ways, Rafe is right. I mean, showing your face in the Outer Banks after being dead is a pretty risky move, especially after what happened to Sheriff Peterkin. It's not impossible. He wouldn't even be the only person this week to show up back from the dead. So after thinking about it, he hops on a plane and heads to the Outer Banks. His daughter, though, is already there, and she's hard up for a place to stay. She knows she can't stay at her house because Rafe is there. And as she's weighing her options, she once again runs into Topper. They decide to hang out. And he happened to be going to a party with a lot of her older friends. A lot of people on the island are curious about what actually happened when she was marooned with the rest of the Pogues. They're looking at Sarah Cameron as a rock star now because she lived by herself for a month plus and she survived. And while Topper is enamored with this story, he's no longer all that enamored with Sarah Cameron. He admits that he made mistakes in the past. He was in love with her, and he was jealous, and that's probably why he had a fight in the boneyard. But after a lot of time, he's been able to move on. He actually has a new girlfriend. That new girlfriend, though, doesn't look as good as Sarah Cameron. And there's alcohol in both their systems, and after some sweet talking, they end up hooking up for the night. Sarah only wakes up the next day when she hears a plane go over her head, and she recognizes the looks of it. She knows that her dad is back in town. And as for the guy she cheated on, John B. and his dad are heading off to find out more information on how to decipher what is on this stone. Big John has a former colleague who is great at this sort of thing. He knows just where she is, but when he heads there, he finds out that she recently died of a heart attack, which is super bizarre because she was really healthy. Her husband tells John that she had just returned from South America. And while he doesn't really have any information about the trip because they were all sworn to secrecy until it was published, it's definitely confusing. The only information that this guy has is the expedition was run by Professor Sowell. And Big John knows exactly who Sowell is. He used to be Big John's mentor until they had a falling out. It's one of the reasons why Big John didn't go to Sowell first. But now, he doesn't have an option. He has to. Him and John B. head over to Sowell's place and... It's not looking great. This guy was a neat freak. The lawn isn't done. And when they break in, there's dirty dishes everywhere. It looks like the place was kind of ransacked. After what happened to Mr. Sun's place, they're both on high alert. And that's when someone does attack him. But to their surprise, it's Professor Sowell. He's definitely not like Big John remembered. He seems very frazzled. After the initial surprise that he's seeing Big John in front of him, he explains that he's on high alert himself because... People from his expedition are slowly dying off of weird, mysterious ways. The heart attack's a prime example. That woman ran triathlon. She didn't die of a heart attack. Sal feels like it's only a matter of time before whoever is doing the killing comes after him next. It's one of the reasons why he isn't interested at what Big John has to bring to him. 
But Big John forces it upon him, opening it up and showing Sal exactly what he found. And once Sal sees the artifact, he does get interested. Sal can't believe that Big John was able to find both pieces of this thing. He had just returned from the Orinoco Basin. So if anybody would have an idea of where this thing should go, it would be Sal. He starts deciphering the hieroglyphics on it. But as he's doing so, he warns Big John, you got to walk away from this. I mean, look what's happened around us. There are forces here. Big John reiterates that all they need to know is where to put it and what the hieroglyphics say. That's it. And Sal says, you just don't understand. But he keeps deciphering what the hieroglyphics say, although none of it's in English. Neither Big John or John B. have any idea what he's talking about. Frustration ends up getting the better of Big John, who grabs Sal and says, tell me what they say. He pulls out a drawing of where to put it. But as he's explaining how to go through this properly in order to find El Dorado, a dart hits him in the neck. Dude, you got a dart in your freaking neck. And Sal just drops to the ground. Big John and his son realize that they're going to be under attack soon, so they hide in a closet. And that's when Singh's men come into the house. They don't know that Big John and John B are there. All they're interested in is finding out what Sal had. And when they see the artifact, they end up grabbing that. When it seems like the coast is somewhat clear, the Johns leave the closet. John B is instructed to tend to the professor, while Big John goes after Singh's men. The last thing that the professor says is the word Neville. That's it. John B can't get anything else out of him because he hears his dad screaming. His dad was ambushed by Singh's men. And it's not soon after that John B. is ambushed as well. Singh comes out of the shadows. He thanks Big John for being able to find both pieces. And then he instructs his men to kill both of them. But Big John is able to barter with him, saying, you have no idea how to read that thing. So unless you're pretty sure that you'll be able to figure it out, you're going to want to keep me alive. Singh thinks about it and agrees with Big John. Says, yeah, no, you're right. We'll take you to South America. But then he instructs his men to go kill John B. Big John is pleading with Singh the entire time to let his son go, but it falls on deaf ears. He gets thrown into a boat heading to South America, where he has one month to decipher what the hieroglyphics say. If they're not deciphered in a month, he's dead. As for John B., he should be dead, but he thinks fast. He throws some sand into his hitman's eyes, and he's able to escape. He's now got to find his way home. Back at home, his friends are trying to reacclimate to normal life. Pope tries going back to school, but it's a miserable disaster. He's missed so much time that he'd have to go back to the normal courses. And he's just too smart for those, so he walks out within about two minutes of being in it. He just can't handle being with us idiots. He heads to his parents' restaurant, where a few hours later, JJ shows up. JJ tried getting a job at the docks, but they couldn't hire him because he just got such a bad reputation with the kooks. As he was leaving, though, he overheard Barry and Rafe on a yacht. Curiosity got the best of him. He hopped in the water, and he overheard them talking about the fact that they melted the cross down and they're trying to sell the gold bars. He had to get this information to Pope, and Pope does not handle it well. Pope's been dealt bad hand after bad hand after bad hand, and This one, he just snaps, because this cross really meant a lot to him. He's tired of being the good guy and vows to do something about it. A couple hours later, his parents notice that their gun is missing, and they ask JJ and Cleo about it. And while JJ and Cleo don't know where the gun is, they have a pretty good idea, so they start looking on the island for Pope before he makes a horrible decision. Cleo finds him at the marina. He's got the gun pointed at Rafe, pretty far away. Rafe can't see him. But before he makes this horrible mistake, Cleo is able to talk him down, make him feel better, and the two head home together. J.J. didn't find Pope, but what he did find was John B. when he got back home. J.J. has the same question for John B. that Sarah had. Dude, what, what is going on? But this time, John B. comes clean. He tells J.J. that his dad killed two guys. It was the two guys from the Coastal Venture. They came there looking for Denmark's diary. After that, Singh showed up, they took Big John, and they tried to kill him. Big John is on a boat headed to South America, and John B's freaking out because he has no idea if he's ever going to see him again. This is a lot for JJ to take in, and while they have no idea what they're going to do, they do know that they need to get to South America immediately. 
Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.